Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning and welcome to lecture 7 of the lecture series introduction to interaction design so in the last lecture we had seen how we look at the conceptual design uh, space and what types of interactions are available that make the user experience uh, very, very uh, uh, positive. So, uh, today we will be looking at the role of cognition in interaction design and uh, we have seen that how technology over the past uh, few decades has really, really been enhanced and we are all uh, coping up with technology as well as how the designers cope up with um, you know making the user get a better uh, hold of uh, the latest technology and how the interactions can be improved. So, if we take an example that if you are preparing for an exam, upcoming exam and uh, while reading for it our phone will uh, buzz, we will get some message, we will get little distracted we will check our Instagram or other such platforms. So, that tells us that how uh, nowadays there are so many uh, distractions available and how we all are multitasking the in our lives. So, one advantage of technology is how it has made things easier on the other hand, how we are now constantly multitasking and there is a lot of research that is going on in this area that whether multitasking is fruitful uh, or it is detrimental to you know our uh, mental processes. So, at the same time it has become very difficult for people to switch their attention and focus on the present uh, task and uh, whether this uh, improves our efficiency or is multitasking making us slow down or our output is decreasing. So, we also see this in other uh, type of uh, digital uh, behaviors like decision making, searching for uh, something or designing. So, today we will see that uh, uh, how uh, this cognition uh, is looked at by designers to improve the interactions. So, if we see this uh, slide we can see here how color gives us a clue. So, this is almost like a universally accepted uh, norm where certain colors stand for certain emotions and we can see that there are a number of these uh, logos of different uh, services that we interact with on a daily basis like Yahoo, Firefox and we can see how different colors get across the feeling of optimism, friendliness or uh, creativity and how these companies or businesses are using these colors to get across to the user to communicate uh, with them and we also retain uh, this in our memory uh, and we associate certain colors with certain businesses or certain uh, ap applications for example. On the right we can see that how this uh, uh, exercise is going on that which uh, color will probably go better. So, mood boards and all are also created to identify that what all color will uh, colors will go well with uh, you know our theme that we are looking at. So, just like you know when we are uh, speaking or we are reading something there is a sentence that we can make sense out of and that sentence is made of words which are made up of letters and there is a syntax, there is uh, an organization in which the words are put together so that they make sense. Similarly, in design also there are these fundamental building blocks which create that meaning uh, in the work that we see in front of us whether it is uh, a piece of artwork or it is digital media and so this is just a, a quick glimpse of all those uh, building blocks. So, first is the space in which we are working then we have uh, dot, line, shape, uh, size, color. So, all these attributes determine how the user is going to perceive the work that is being presented in that space and how minor modifications can enhance it. In one of the last uh, uh, lectures, we saw the grid, how the grid helps in organizing the information much more efficiently. So, cognition 
is of many different types because uh, we think we have to remember uh, we are learning we are also daydreaming so our cognition in, is involved in a lot of activities throughout the day uh, without us even realizing sometimes but broadly if we see cognition can be divided into experiential cognition and also into uh, uh, reflective uh, cognition so experiential uh, cognition is when we are experiencing something so for example when we are uh, say driving a car so we are observing uh, what is in front of us if suddenly a dog comes uh, in our way so we will quickly press the brakes so so our actions are dependent on what we are experiencing at that moment if there is a green light we'll start driving if there's a red light we'll stop similarly when we are uh, searching through uh, social media maybe we will uh, respond to something we we'll like some photograph we will write a comment so uh, this but requires a certain level of uh, expertise and engagement so we have to be engaged in that process in order to uh, for uh, us to uh, you know uh, take a particular step in that direction the next is the reflective cognition this is where this is a longer process where some attention is required we need to make a judgment and take a decision uh, on this so for example when we are writing a review or a feedback so if our experience has been positive we will uh, search for words that will express our feeling and similarly when it is a negative experience we will also search for the right uh, content to get our message across and also when we are comparing the products we are looking at all the different uh, factors uh, memory speed a lot of uh, things that will determine our experience and based on that we will take a decision so this can also be seen as the experiential and reflective as as fast and slow thinking so uh, ref, uh, experiential is a fast thinking wherein we have to take a quick uh, decision and uh, uh, our reflective is a slow thinking where we are taking more time to uh, reflect back maybe retrieve some information from somewhere like when we do when we are writing an exam we put our thoughts together we retrieve some information and then we write a nice answer so uh, a, a very a simple example of uh, fast thinking or uh, experiential thinking is when i say 2 into 2 so the quick answer will be 4 it's a very quick uh, process and the slow thinking or the reflective one is if i say 2 into 568 so it will take us a little bit more time to come up with the answer now cognition uh, like i said has uh, is quite a vast uh, area of study but some of the uh, important uh, processes are attention perception memory learning reading speaking listening and problem solving so we'll take a look at all of these uh, processes so attention is central to our life so we have to be attentive uh, uh, in case we are crossing a road or uh, a lecture is going on so we need to be attentive in order to uh, take that information and uh, in the first example not getting hit by a car in the in the second example uh, you know preparing for the exam being attentive in the lecture so so attention is a, a very um, uh, basic uh, requirement uh, that is there and we all uh, pay attention in our lives on a lot of things on a daily basis so if we see uh, this particular slide now attention also uh, means in terms of interaction design that how quickly can a user uh, pay attention to a certain task or solve a particular uh, you know uh, problem or give an answer so here for example if i ask you that uh, uh, how many runs did yuvraj take uh, make so this will take a lot of time to first uh, you know identify the information present and then sifting through it to finally get to where the uh, uh, the uh, the r is showing here but if i show you uh, this particular organization then we can quickly identify uh, the r here so this shows that how the organization of the uh, elements like i said earlier the syntax how we are organizing this information to for the user to be able to uh, uh, quickly uh, get information and be attentive at the same time 
So, in order for designers to create more interfaces where the user can be more attentive, so there are certain uh, quick guidelines. So, using color like we saw here in the previous slide that how here the rows are slightly different color that the main heading is of a different color. So, it helps us identify the important elements uh, right there. Underlining, so underlining also is another technique then how the sequence of information is presented, what is more important. So, is there some hierarchy and spacing of items. So, here in this previous example on the left, we saw how the even the spacing is uneven, the rows, the columns are up and down. So, that also uh, makes it difficult to perceive the information and pay attention on the given task. And what is to be avoided is at the same time that the, we should not clutter the visual interface even adding too much of color or underlining too much will actually take away from our intention which is for the user to pay more attention. So, uh, even the uh, to do list needs to be carefully executed in order to uh, get the desired result that we are looking for. Now, next is uh, perception. So, perception refers to uh, how information is acquired from the environment. So, we have five senses touch. Uh, vision, hearing, smell, etcetera and uh, these are transformed into our experiences. So, we are constantly learning from our surroundings since when we were a baby and uh, uh, parents were the first people to interact with us. So, we uh, learned how to respond to our environment, uh, uh, ask for certain things and uh, perception again a subhead of cognition again it is quite a a complex area of study and there are two broad approaches the bottom up processing wherein uh, we uh, we feel first we process the sensory information first and the top down wherein we apply the knowledge that we already have and then interpret it and uh, organize it so here is an example of text that is in uh, front of us um, we can see nine uh, it is already divided. So, the there is certain spacing, some white space is given which is again a technique used by uh, designers in order to uh, ensure that the perception is uh, done uh, in the right way. And in the next slide we can see that all we have done is put a box around these text boxes. And here the background of certain squares or rectangles is in a contrasting color. So, a lot of research has uh, gone into this to find out that which is the most appropriate way of presenting information and uh, it turns out that when we uh, place information in boxes that is the most uh, you know uh, efficient way uh, for one to absorb the information or, or to perceive the information to understand the information. Now, all these you know color making columns space they may seem like a very information that we already know. So, we may feel that this is something that it is already there, but there are a lot of um, designers and lot of such interactions you will see uh, all these applications where still these principles are not followed and a lot of research has gone in the past to be able to come up with this information. So, it is not something that was already always known, but uh, constantly research is going on in this direction to find out better ways to present the information. So, that the, the users cognitive processes are not overloaded. Now, how can we utilize this? So, by using icons and other graphical uh, representations, which is uh, uh, different uh, not using the same thing for several things. For example, you see that I have put this little uh, orange circle with a tick. So, whenever there is a little guideline or to do list, so one can easily identify if I put this circle in every slide, then it will lose its uh, impact, it will lose its meaning. So, similarly, where to use, how much to use, uh, the judicious use of these is important. Uh, how do we uh, group information and uh, use separators, boxes, or white spaces? Color contrast, how many colors? Uh, uh, you know how many colors to use, which color should be next to which color. So, these are all you know uh, areas of study which 
um, researchers are working on because there are some colors which will uh, not be perceived very well by the eye, but there are some combinations which will uh, you know really show the uh, information very clearly. So, this comes from trial and error also, there are certain uh, these color combinations already also. So, depending on the designer, they can either pick from the existing color palettes or they can create their own color palettes. Also, when we are talking about interactive systems, it is not just about reading, although that comes very easily for us or the visual uh, elements that are presented to us, because that is one of our strongest senses. But when we are talking about interactive products, uh, maybe applications or other devices also, so there is a feedback given by the audio sound as well. So, whenever we are for example, putting in our pen drive in our computer, so it makes a little sound, so it tells it is connected with the system, right. So, how do we also distinguish those sounds? On our, on our phone, sometimes we uh, save our parents number with a certain uh, sound, our friends number with a certain sound, so we know whether it is an important call or is it not an important call. So, how are, uh, how can we design uh, these uh, sound palette also, so that the user can distinguish and similarly the haptic feedback. So, when we are typing, we get a little feedback, so we know that we have typed, uh, right. So, uh, of course, we can, we can control the haptic feedback also, it can be very mild or medium or high depending on our uh, requirements. So, uh, but in all of these, it is important that the designer should be able to help the user distinguish between all of these um, information. Now, uh, coming to memory, so you know memory is important uh, because we have to store a lot of information and we have to retrieve the information as well uh, in time, but it is not possible for us to remember everything that we see here or uh, we smell. So, when that happens is uh, when our brain gets uh, overloaded because there is only a limit till which the brain can store uh, information, beyond that it, it gets just burnt up. So, generally the brain uses a filtering process, so it decides whether uh, what information will get further processed and memorized and, uh, but this process is pretty uh, complex, it is not very straightforward and, and that proves to say because sometimes when we want to remember something, we are not able to remember it, but sometimes something will get stuck in our brain and we will not be able to get rid of it. So, uh, that is how the brain is very uh, complex and as a designer, we need to ensure that the interaction that we are uh, creating for the designer, he should be able to memorize it easily or uh, he or she should be able to efficiently navigate through it. So, uh, there are broadly three types of uh, memories, uh, sensory memory, so uh, this is usually uh, visual or audit auditory stimulus and this is, this happens very uh, quickly, uh, just after hearing something or seeing something. So, that is the uh, immediate sensory memory. Second is the short term memory. So, this stores the information uh, temporarily and uh, then uh, like for example, doing simple math calculations or uh, remembering somebody's phone number and long term memory is when we store the information uh, over a long period of time and uh, over may maybe years as well, but we can sometimes surprise ourselves by you know recalling, uh, recalling it when we probably have not been able you know have not been in touch with it for a while. For example, the periodic table. So, what is the uh, you know what uh, how do we represent silver or gold? So, we do not use it on our daily basis, but still we can recall it. So, that has been embedded in our long term memory. Now, there is a, a need for this personal information management, because there are so many documents that we work on, so many photos we click. Earlier, there used to be a, a phone with the roll and we used to get it developed and uh, we used to put them in the album and you know preserve it. But now, with the mobile phones and digital cameras, we keep on clicking uh, all the time all around us and uh, this becomes like a large uh, clutter. So, music files as well, it is so easy to now get our hands on uh, these mp3, mp4 files. So, it becomes important that how do we uh, also store and manage this information 
maybe by making folders and then folders within that or uh, you know on the cloud saving on the cloud. So, we can access them uh, quickly and easily. So, this is the personal information management. Then memory uh, load and uh, passwords. So, there are a lot of these personal uh, security mechanisms that you know places like uh, banks, online banking uh, all of these are employing because um, we need to protect our personal uh, data. And then there are several steps through which we can retrieve this in case we uh, forget. So, like there is a pin. So, several methods are there in order to open up our laptop or uh, our uh, tablet there is a pin or to enter a specialized lab we may enter with the help of a card or maybe the biometric because we all have a very uh, unique uh, uh, identification or fingerprint so uh, or facial recognition for that matter so all of these different ways are now utilized in order to protect the you know personal information and also to allow the access based on their these personal details so uh, there is this interesting um, theory by george miller where he says that 7 plus or minus 2 so this is the theory where he says that chunks of information can be held in short term memory at any one time which is 7 plus minus 2 so either 5 or 7 or 9. So, this is the range between 5 to 9 we can uh, store in our memory. And this chunk uh, refers to numbers, words, letters. So, for example, here on the screen we can see you know 8, 12, 5, 9. So, if I give you some time to memorize just to look at this and I close this slide. So, maybe one will retain between 5 to 9 numbers. Below that, we can see some words cat, shoe, milk, etcetera. So, again there is uh, the human capacity is limited to recall once we have seen these words to recall 7 plus or minus 2 numbers or words. The same goes for the you can see here house cat. Now, these are two words which make a phrase, two word phrases. So, house cat, shoe string, chocolate milk. Now, they have been put together in such a way that they actually make sense because we are familiar with chocolate milk, we are familiar with butterfly. So, it is easy to remember uh, these two uh, word phrases as well. But when we mix them up house milk or cat shoe or butter key, so this will take our brain to process much longer because these are not familiar terminologies we are not we are seeing them for the first time probably so we will take a lot more time so this shows how the user can retain information and how do we present this information so he can quickly store and retrieve it so a lot of uh, designers uh, have used this theory to design interactive uh, products or applications so wherein they have some uh, guidelines like you know there should be only 7 options on a menu or only 7 icons on a menu bar or 7 bullets so on and so forth. But this is not really true when we interact with uh, you know digital interfaces because for example, this is a screenshot of Amazon. Whenever we need to retrieve something we can just quickly uh, you know press on the menu bar and all the information will roll out. So, we do not and this is something that will not just be you know will should not appear for a flash and then disappear. So, we can always go back to it revisit it. So, uh, really uh, Miller's uh, rule does not really uh, you know uh, uh, apply for these digital interfaces. Another uh, interesting thing is the digital forgetting because we all are like I said earlier we are all the time multitasking and uh, we become forgetful uh, over time because there is so much to do. So, we use help of you know to do lists reminders in our phones meeting submission deadlines all of those things and uh, there are certain diseases also certain uh, uh, you know uh, lifestyle oriented or uh, maybe because of age which is one of them is alzheimer's disease where people forget so how can we also design interactive systems for people who need 
to retrieve information, to remember very basic things just like even you know re remembering their uh, families faces. So, this becomes very important for designers as well. So, here we can see that long complicated procedures should be avoided, so that user can uh, quickly uh, uh, understand, memorize it and use it when required. And then uh, interfaces that help recognition that is uh, better than when they have to recall the information. And also when we provide variety of ways of labeling the digital information like uh, email, file, images and all. So, it helps the users identify the information easily. Colors, uh, color coding, uh, time stamping and other things are also very uh, effective ways of doing it. Now, learning is very close to memory because without memory we cannot learn, uh, we cannot uh, and we cannot learn without our memory. So, it uh, goes hand in hand because uh, we need memory to hold the information that we are learning. right? So, there are two types of uh, learnings, the incidental learning and the intentional learning. So, in incidental learning it happens uh, uh, without any you know uh, measure being taken from our side. So, we can see you know a map and we can say oh that is my street. So, we have not really learnt to remember our street, but we have learnt it because we have been walking around that street for a number of years. So, we can easily identify it and intentional learning is where we have to intentionally learn. So, for an exam we have to prepare. So, these are the two broad learning types and now uh, since we have uh, online learning, we have so much of multimedia, virtual reality. So, we need to navigate through all of these to see that how can this learning be more effective for the user, how can they learn whether the, the incidental learning is going to be applicable here or intentional learning. So, as designers we need to see that interfaces that we design, they encourage the user to explore. So, that may be experiential uh, sorry incidental learning probably will happen and uh, interfaces that constrain and guide user to select appropriate actions. So, that uh, step by step processes which sort of guide the user. So, he or she is not lost in the beginning and then the learning happens in a very systematic order. Next we come to reading, speaking and uh, listening. So, these are three ways in which we take in information. So, there are some differences between these three like written uh, language is permanent and on the other hand listening is temporary unless we record it. So, it is very important in today's time when we are on so many social media platforms uh, and people are uh, you know writing, uh, responding. So, it becomes very important because the written text is very difficult to uh, take back uh, as compared to when we sp speak something, we say something. So, if for example, I am talking with somebody and they uh, make a mistake, they give me a wrong day or time. I can say ki that is a wrong day and time, it is not uh, Tuesday uh, on 7th. But when I receive this information for example, on an email, then I cannot respond in the same manner. I will have to politely probably point out. Okay, so, and then also out of these three which requires the most cognitive uh, load. So, for example, listening uh, takes uh, less cognitive load. We can easily listen and that is why children, young children, they like to listen to stories because they can uh, just listen and understand rather than reading or looking at something. So, we can uh, take from here for interac uh, interactive uh, uh, you know interfaces that when we are giving a you know a feedback through the speech because again these products can have various ways of uh, passing on the information. So, uh, short speech based menus and instructions so that user is able to understand them, uh, clear audio speech because nowadays we have a lot of these bots which respond. So, and lot of accents people have different accents they may have some trouble understanding. So, the clear audio should be there. and how the text should uh, you know one should be able to make it large or small depending on their needs. Now, problem solving 
uh, planning, reasoning and decision making are processes that involve reflective uh, cognition. So, they often involve uh, conscious uh, processes that is being aware of what one is thinking about and discussion with others or talking to ourselves and the use of various kinds of artifacts like we use books, maps, uh, paper etcetera. So, in problem solving uh, how we approach a problem, if there is a, a problem of say you know going on a vacation, then how do we plan for it? We identify the place, how will we reach there, what will we do there, so if or some other problem maybe a smaller uh, daily life problem. Planning is uh, the process of uh, developing a course of uh, action, how to book uh, an Uber. So, uh, where do I go first? I will drop a friend, then I will pick somebody else. How do I plan my route around it? Then reasoning uh, involves working through different scenarios and deciding which is the best option or solution uh, to a given problem. So, when we are deciding on what food to order, so people may weigh the pros and cons of uh, different uh, cuisines, uh, Chinese or Lebanese etcetera, based on factors like how healthy is it, how many calories or should I order veg, non-veg, distance, will the food get soggy and so on and so forth. So, when uh, we are weighing all these options, so they reason through the advantages and disadvantages uh, of each before deciding on the final order. Now, decision making is an area of uh, deep interest for researchers and we need to know that how people make decisions when they are confronted with information overload. Okay. And so, for example, when we are shopping on the web or in a store, so there are so many products available, how do we make the right decision, how do we arrive at the uh, final uh, product to buy. So, how easy or difficult is it to make a, a decision when we are confronted with all of these overwhelming choices. So, now the question here is that whether people weigh the costs and benefit of different uh, courses of action or they use simple heuristics when making these decisions. So, that is a question and so some studies point out to the fact that we use simple you know reasoning abilities uh, for making the shortest route or quick uh, decisions uh, to arrive at the final uh, decision because the human brains have evolved in that way so that we can quickly make a good enough decision that can that is not probably the best, but it is good enough for us. So, for example, in the supermarket when we are we plan uh, and we go to a market to buy say a pack of noodles, then we will probably buy it based on the brand that we know or maybe we will see the uh, price, we will compare the price and uh, buy the cheaper one or we will look at the attractive packaging that this uh, color combination looks very nice, let us try it out today. So, humans uh, take uh, generally a very simpler uh, route to arrive at the decision. So, from this we can take away that how can we apply this to our uh, uh, interaction design for uh, applications that so for any uh, for easy access for people who want to uh, understand more about maybe a certain task how to carry it out for efficiently. So, maybe help pages can be there or information can be laid out in a in an organized manner for them, especially for activities like when we are searching the web, uh, we often have you know uh, a help button. So, if we have a query it uh, sorts it out and also the functions should be simple and memorable, so that uh, quick decision making can be done. So, for example, when we are shopping online, so add to the basket, uh, sometimes you know we see two options add to the basket or uh, buy, buy right now. So, that one can if one is in a hurry then adding in the basket, going to the basket, checking out that process shortens and we just buy, press uh, buy now and just go to the checkout uh, section of it. So, today we saw that how the brain is such a complex uh, you know a uh, feature and but at the same time it is so important because we require it for you know making very small to large decisions 
learning, uh, memorizing things, retrieving information and this becomes very important for designers to understand how the cognition works, what types of different cognitions are there for us to be able to uh, you know design our uh, interaction in such a way that the cognition, the cognitive load is decreased because anyway uh, because of all these technologies and you know uh, new things that are coming uh, you know around every day, we need to uh, sort of organize our life in a certain manner. And so, applications that uh, do that, applications that will help us you know simplify our lives will always be preferred by users. On the other hand, applications that will create more confusion, so they will of course fail over some time. So, uh, we will stop here today and in the next lecture, we will start with social interaction that what is the role of social interaction in designing uh, interactive interfaces for users. Thank you.